Good morning, everyone. This is Mark Romali here with the Hurricane Outlook and discussion for June 15th, 2022, current on 11 a.m. Eastern Time. We have a lot to talk about today, including multiple tropical cyclone threats over the next several days. And could we be having early July main development region activity closer to the Lesser Antilly Islands and Puerto Rico? Well, let's go ahead and find out here. Jumping straight into everything, taking a wild look across the tropical Atlantic this afternoon, we noticed that a couple of things are happening. Uh, first of all, in the tropical Atlantic, we have this mega tropical wave that came off of Africa yesterday. It has now since diminished, but it is still around. This is not a threat to develop over the next several days. We have Invest Area 93L located over land at this point, over Central America. We have Invest Area 93E over here in the East Pacific, and then Hurricane Blast off the screen here. Uh, and at least two of these systems could be posing some significant land concerns over the next several days. And then we also have a new system out here that we'll be watching for development as this kind of tries to meander around in the tropical and subtropical Atlantic. So we'll go ahead and talk about all that now. Taking a look over kind of a brief overview of the East Pacific Basin, we have newly designated hurricane blasts over here in the East Pacific, now a Category 1 hurricane, well on its way to becoming a Category 2 hurricane moving towards the Northwest here. And then we have Invest Area 93E, over here to the south of Guatemala City. This will be moving off towards the north and west over the next several days, but could eventually kind of loop back on itself and impact portions of Central America over the next couple of days as we kind of get this thing entangled within 93L over here. Speaking of 93L, this is the Atlantic Basin. Now, Invest Area 93L is now located over land at this point, and development chances have dropped down to a 30% over the next couple of days here. Now, this is expected to kind of kick back up and around this larger gyre that's expected to develop over here, and will be rotating over to portions of the Yucatan Peninsula, where a development potential, once it gets back over land, is certainly there. So real quick look here at Hurricane Blast. Again, maximum sustained winds have now increased to run right around 75 miles per hour. This is quickly becoming a strong hurricane. You notice that the very well-developed central dense overcast here with an eye trying to appear out here on the satellite. We notice that there is some rain bands that are affecting portions of coastal Mexico. But other than that, this will be moving off towards the north and west here over the next few days into the cooler waters. We notice that this little tiny island over here is in the path of the three-day cone here, uh, but this will be a weakening storm as cooler sea surface temperatures over in this part of the world uh, will hand, uh, really hamper significant development there. Now, focusing on Invest Area 93E real quickly as well, again, we notice that we have a developing storm within this region. We have some westernlies here indicated by the cloud field and then easternlies over top of this. And this has definitely led to a circulation beginning to develop with this thing. Now, the thing is, is that this will be posing some land concern, but it's not a significant threat, at least for the next two to three days. But this will kind of be just meandering around in this area and could in fact loop back on itself and impact portions of Central America on the East Pacific side over the next several days. So this is something that we'll have to watch and we'll talk about more of this in the next upcoming couple of days. Now, focusing on the Atlantic side, Invest Area 93L. Now, we talked about the system yesterday that the development is very complicated here. We noticed that the low-level circulation or what is still left of a circulation is currently over land, but it is still in proximity to the ocean. It's not over significant land at this point, but it is still over land. And with that being said, the development chances have certainly dwindled, at least for now. We notice that if we back up here and go to the zoomed out satellite, uh, what we can tell is that we do have a vast amount of convection in this area. We also have a tropical wave over here that could be playing a part as it begins to move towards the north and west. This might actually begin to interact with some of that, and this might be our new area to monitor, although it's really not much right now. But there is some suggestions that this might be the new area to watch as it starts to interact with this area of spin down here. Now, the upper level winds are still pretty strong. We noticed that the cirrus plume is kind of stretching out here, indicating that there's some uh, you know, vast east to west, or really from east to west flow, uh, west to east flow. And that definitely means and goes to suggest that we do have a 
fair amount of shear in this area, but it is not enough to really, uh, really hinder uh, at least some development of the system. Now the GFS forecast on this, this is the A50 millibar vorticity or the spin in the atmosphere at about 5,000 feet off the ground. So this tells us the cyclonic spin in the atmosphere. We notice what we want a storm to look like is this right here. That's hurricane blast. And we want a storm to look like that if we're going to get anything. So over the next several days, now we notice that this little weak tropical wave actually does kind of pivot around here and does become the new focal point where there is at least a weak area of spin over here. And while development really isn't showing up much more on the GFS, uh, there is still a chance that it does spin up here. And, and in fact, there is a little bit of a closed circulation here uh, by Saturday night into Sunday as this begins to approach the Yucatan Peninsula. I would not expect uh, anything significantly strong at this point, but at least some development into a weak depression or storm is certainly possible as this approaches the Yucatan Peninsula. Upper level winds are going to the, be the main hindering factor here. We do have some pretty strong upper level winds from Invest 93E over here in the East Pacific, and that's really going to be cutting out some pretty strong shear in this region, not really allowing for significant organization of this, but I could definitely still see it becoming a storm. Now, the European solution, again, not really so much, but there is some enhanced vorticity in here uh, by Friday night into Saturday. So there could be a storm on approach to the, I, uh, or to the Yucatan Peninsula. Either way, dangerous rainfall and gusty winds and some severe weather are certainly possible for portions of the Yucatan Peninsula, including Belize and Cancun. So we'll have to monitor that pretty closely over the next several days. Now, as a as kind of a look at the Atlantic as a whole right now, this is the Atlantic main development region, really just minus the rest of the global tropics. So it's just kind of looking at, it's factoring in the, the entire global tropics here. But we noticed that really through March and April, we were, you know, really on the downward trend below average. And we did dip back in there to early June. But the overall trend has been one that has been on the increase over the last several weeks. And our daily contributor here is about 0.3 Celsius above the long term average, which does definitely go to suggest that the Atlantic main development region is beginning that upward trend and warming at this particular point. Now, the climate forecast system of the sea surface temperature anomaly pattern valid for July, this goes out through July 31st, we notice that the subtropics here take a massive hit and we get this pretty classic phase one Atlantic multi-decadal oscillation. Basically, just a fancy way of saying that we have a really warm Atlantic main development region that is consistently focused in the tropical regions rather than the subtropical regions up here. This is good for significant tropical cyclone development out in this region, and that certainly allows uh, for warming of the MDR, significant storms, and the potential for a very, very hyperactive season if we were to get a look that is like this. And also notice that the Southwest and Atlantic and just, you know, really everywhere where land is, yeah, it's pretty warm. Now, one of the things that we've been talking about is potential tropical cyclone formation in early July. This is coming off the European uh, forecast here, and this is basically just a weekly mean of the tropical cyclone strike probability. And this is out in the long range, so this is not to be taken per batum, basically. Uh, but this definitely goes out enough where we could see, you notice that there's definitely a probability, at least a you know 20 to 30% probability of tropical cyclone development and striking near the Lesser Antilles over the next couple of weeks. Now, again, is this actually going to happen? Well, maybe not. Um, again, this is not to be taken per batum, but this is definitely showing that we could have some early July activity in the MDR. And... Um, this is just kind of another forecast here. This is a little bit further out in time. And we notice that the Caribbean is also kind of highlighted and maybe some subtropical activity as well. So things certainly look to be on the rise at this point. And I surely would not be surprised if we do get any early season activity in July. We noticed that the GFS forecast 
you know, does kind of go for that. I mean, this is, you know, late June, so it's not necessarily July, but, you know, a tropical wave that tries to spin up into a, a storm at that point and minus this, don't really bother looking at that. That's probably just convective feedback problem, but we still notice that there definitely could be, you know, a storm that tries to develop in that region and the European definitely is coming on board with a little bit of that. So we'll be watching this area pretty closely uh, as we head into early July and then also watching the subtropical Atlantic for potential development there as well. Although the model support has definitely waned for that. So not really so sure that we're going to be seeing development uh, in the subtropics, at least over the next couple of days. All right. With that being said, make sure to like this video, share it to everybody who you want to, and, you know, leave a comment, you know, tell me what you think about this. With that being said, hope you have a great rest of your afternoon and evening. Of course, I am Michael Romali. I'll talk to you guys again some more tomorrow.